We're back uh, with Russell Pierce, President of the State Senate. This is Dennis Wilenchek on KFNX 1100 News Talk Radio. And uh, Russell was just uh, talking to us uh, about uh, the immigration issue, and uh, we were trying to figure out here together uh, why he's such a lightning rod on this issue and why people take it so personally. Uh, Russell, why don't, uh, in that regard, let me ask you, obviously it's on a lot of people's minds, uh, this recall effort. Let me start with this. Uh, as far as I know, you're the only legislator now to even have a recall, at, at least is successful in the sense that it's going to go forward, uh, which tells me a lot. Uh, why are you such a lightning rod for these issues? Well, let me clarify something. It may or may not go oh, okay. forward because they, you know, they have they've not followed the law or the Constitution. Not that the courts have ever allowed that. To yeah, get it, right, exactly. <laughs> but well, you did file thought, something so, in court on right. this, right? What's it's the status a, of that? Well, we have our hearing Monday, and then uh, and then the Supreme it'll go to Supreme Court either way. They'll hear it. I understand August thirty first. Okay. We should prevail. We. We have case law, the law, and the Constitution on our side. Hopefully the judges... And what's your argument in a nutshell as to why this recall should not go forward legally? Well, they didn't follow the law. They, they, uh, there are several issues involved. First yeah. of all, there, was, uh, there were several hundred folks who signed the petition who live outside of my district. And you have to be registered uh, uh, electorate inside that district, qualified to elect to vote in that district. Uh, and you, so you can't be from Glendale and Scottsdale yeah. to Shannon inside. Several hundred numbers. Then they also had you have to, uh, by constitution, that you have to guarantee the signatures are genuine. We have many, many petitions where we have folks who sign for other folks where it's not their signature. And that invalidates the entire petition because you violated your oath to guarantee that signature is genuine, so you can't guarantee any of the others when you can't guarantee that one. And so there's a lot of So you have enough questionable issues. signatures already. To, to question the validity of the recall? Well, if they uphold the law, and, yeah. and there was a debate around the genuineness, and people want to debate that. Right. During the Constitution, there was a debate why that was a higher standard than a referendum and an initiative, because you're letting the minority overturn the majority. You know, because this is, well, you're elected, I, I'm, I'm elected, elected. I'm elected, undo an and this is undoing an election, you're right. right. And, and it's an abuse of the process, because they're undoing the election based on what I was elected on. This isn't because I've done anything immoral. Proper. This is because they disagree with me. Well, that's what's so bizarre about it. Yeah. Well, that's why we have elections every two years. If you disagree with me, you have, you're welcome to run. And it seems to me and the people I've talked to to be an incredible waste of money on people's minds. In fact, people have written in that why why are we wasting money on this? As you said, there's a process for this. If you disagree with the guy, then vote him out of office. That's the way it yeah. works in this country. And I'm 16 and old count primaries in my district. They know me, like I said. What does that mean, 16 and you know? Well, I've been elected 16 count primaries and generals together. Well, uh, I, I've won those 16 elections. I've do you have the support lives. in your mind of the people in your district? Yeah, I do in my mind. I mean, and again, special special elections. Are so who's behind this? It's kind of interesting. It's out of district folks. They're right. not even a member of my district. Uh, one is Randy Perez, who's the uh, former AFL CIO boss. Uh, he's pro gay marriage. He uh, he's anti 1070. He's helped he orchestrate some of the protests at the Capitol. This guy ran for Senate. Yeah, a failed Democrat Senate uh, candidate, and he's going to determine who should be elected in LD18, what Republicans should hold that office. He's never supported me. His group has never supported me. Yeah. They're, the, they're the extreme left, uh, you know, and, and again, what is you this know, hearing Mary going Rose Wilcox and all these folks that protest in Maricopa County every day, they're part of that group. What, when is this hearing? Well, the hearing, uh, the first hearing will be, like, say, Monday. And then in Superior Court? In Superior Court, that, the trial court level. And then it'll be appealed. Whatever side wins or loses. You know which judge is hearing it? Yeah, and I apologize. I'm trying Can't to remember. Name, but we did draw a Democrat judge, I, and he's fairly modern. I'm, I'm hoping. You know, okay, well, we'll wait and see, and we'll hopefully uh, see how that comes out for you. And, and so, uh, basically, because recalls are very rare, um, this is sort of unprecedented, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, they paid for signatures. They weren't volunteers. And, and you can't believe some of the stories, but I've had folks call me, say, Russell, the recall people call me and thank me for signing. I never signed. I've never signed anything. Yeah. They're really upset. And others have said, I signed to re reinstate access. I had no idea this was a recall. Because if you read the, uh, which is another issue on the top, it's very clearly has to state the purpose of a recall in there. And they have failed to do that. So, so you'd think it was a resolution more than a recall if you read that. So, well, do they, they, let me ask you this before we turn to the next topic. Not everybody. I mean, yeah, of course. Deciding. But let's let's uh, discuss. We obviously understand some of the motives behind that. But 
from, from your standpoint, do they have to state a basis for the recall? I mean, what's the basis According of it? According to the Constitution, they do have to state a basis. So what's the basis that they're claiming? Well... Do they have one? No, not really. I mean, other than they disagree, they said that... This, yeah, we understand they, they, they disagree with you. They more, want a more gentle Senate, as if I'm not... Every senator, every Republican senator but two signed a letter that said, I'm one of the best leaders they've ever worked with and most effective. we got a balanced budget out. during a tough, tough time. Uh, we could teach Washington a few things. We know how to balance a budget. We stopped reckless spending. We didn't increase our no no bonding, no no debt, no gimmicks, no games, no rollovers. We balance an honest, balanced budget in less than a hundred in a hundred days, and then we concluded business well. We had some major reform policies that we took on this year too. We did a lot of good stuff this year for the people of Arizona, and I always put Arizona first in this Constitution. So, so they have no basis, in other words, that they stated No, they disagree. They disagree with SB 1070. They disagree with, that's really what it amounts to. These, again, the folks involved in, in, in advocating and, and facilitating these protests around right. the world. And, and, and let me ask you this. How does this work now? Uh, assume for the sake of argument that they succeed and the, the court rules against you and it proceeds. Do you have any idea how this works? Because quite frankly, I don't know how this would work. If the courts rule against me, and there's a very short time frame, uh, because the last day for going to printer to get those ballots ready is about September 20th. Mm -hmm. So the, the Supreme Court has agreed to take this August 31st. So they will have to have a quick turnaround, you know, and within, you know. The Supreme Court's already agreed to look at it. They've already agreed. Regardless of what the decision yeah, they, is. You're right. Okay. Because they're, they're gone, they'll be back. So the first day they can hear it is August 31st. In order to get the pamphlets out, if in fact it goes Because there's a drop dead day. And, right. then, and then when would there be an, an election? November 8th. And that election would be in your district? In my district only. And do you have any reason to believe, again, by polling or whatever, that they have any traction in your district? I, I have a strong base. I mean, you know. That's I mean, what I would yeah. think. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's a big waste of time, probably. Well, special elections, yeah, that's a big shot. This is, a this is for one, the one candidate running, clearly, who advocates and professes to be a conservative Republican, he's joined hands with the Democrats to go around the process our founders set up and to ignore the primary process. The reason we have primaries is so parties, it's not a real election, it's a nomination. That's where the parties nominate their candidate to stand for an election in the general. He's decided to blow off the Republicans. The Democrats have already said they're his candidate. He's their candidate. They intend to support him. The open border, uh, who's he for the libertarians have, huh? Who, who's he that you're referring to? Jerry Lewis. Oh. And, uh, but now there's another guy that's popped up, right? Yeah. Uh, no, well, two. Uh, two. An independent and then a Hispanic uh, Republican. I can't remember her name. But a conservative. I understand probably a nice lady. Uh, let me let me get to this. Why do you do this? I'm just curious. I mean, listening to this. That's the toughest question you'd ever ask. I'm glad you do, but why do you do this? You know, Dennis, and, and I'll try to be brief. Yeah, that's I never right. I never intended to run for office. Uh, I, you know, I all I had aspirations to be run for sheriff, but I never really wanted to be the candidate. Uh, I've always supported good candidates. I've worked hard for them, good conservatives those that understand the founding principles and have their moral compass in place. I've always worked hard for candidates. I've, I've been a good Republican, uh, you know, my whole life. Well, why would you want to put up with all this? Yeah. There's just a time that you've had enough is enough. It's that, that thing, you stick your head out the window and yell, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And that's it. People who run on, run, run, tell you what they stand for, and then they go down there, they're whips. And not all of them, I mean, because they're disagreement. Good people can disagree. We all know good people disagree. But the folks you count on to be firm, to be tough, go down and negotiate away those things they promised that they wouldn't do. So they, ba you know, basically it's a matter of principle with you. Well, yes, it is. And I got talked into it. They became an open in LD18, which then was LD29 for the redistrict. And they came to me and asked me to run. And I said, oh, I'll help you find a candidate. But then I got thinking about it. And all the names that surfaced, I said, I want a fighter. I want somebody who's willing to do what they say and put their life on the line. And I don't, that's want, what you're I don't doing. want to overstate. Well, that's what you're doing. Again, death threats. All well, let me, let me, would you so ever run for a sheriff? Time. Would you ever run for sheriff? If uh, the sheriff ever steps down? The sheriff knows I've always had it. I love law enforcement. Again, I've been in the sheriff's office 20 years. You were chief deputy. Years. I was chief deputy under Sheriff Joe. I've been a judge. I love the criminal justice system. I certainly would be more than tempting. First of all, it's family. I know those guys and gals. I love them. Uh, I consider myself a cop's cop. I, you know, I, I believe that our 
job is out there 24 7 making sure we're finding the bad guys and putting them away to so if the sheriff ever members. ever steps down you would consider that uh i have to be honest with the sheriff ever stepped down i probably would yeah okay uh, let's go join our friends i have no, no intention of ever running against sheriff joe be tough uh, i work hard to keep him there he's doing the right thing he keeps his oath of office He's doing what very few other folks are doing. In fact, the only sheriff in the state that's really doing what he does. Well, you guys have a lot in common. You're both tough, and you stand for what you you know you say, and, uh, and you back it up. We're going to take a, a quick break, Russell. I appreciate your being here in studio with us at KFNX. This is Dennis Wolinchek on Legal Ease, and we'll return uh, to talk to Russell Pierce, President of the State Senate, in just a few minutes.